All right, welcome back. Hopefully I didn't scare anybody off by my terrible computer graphics here. All right, so back in the assembly building. Let's launch this lander. All right, you can see that it's the same exact launcher, same rocket, just a different thing up top. You can see in here, basically I've recreated the Phoenix lander. Got some solar panels, whatnot, even have included a heat shield. Something most KSB players don't do, <laughs> especially in the stock game. But let's add something. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> See, remember last time I was talking about how uh, if you don't have power, the ship will die. <laughs> so let's go ahead and set these up to an action group so that I can open them up just by pushing a single button. That'll save some time. All right. So, all right, let's uh, save this and launch it. All right, first let's see where the, all right, yeah, that's not quite right. See, look out here, you can see the thing. It's gonna fly off as I fast forward time. Okay, went a little bit far there, but I think that'll be all right. You can see it getting pretty far away now. Yeah, let's go ahead and actually put this into a another trajectory here. Yeah, basically I'm just going to go ahead and launch it straight off. So no bothering with getting into orbit first. It's just going to go straight off into basically a big one single burn straight off to Duna. All right, guidance on, throttling up and lift off of the first privately funded lander on another world. Alright, let's get rid of that stage and just continue on burning. <laughs> Leave it behind in our dust. Here we go. Do, 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 do. You can see my I've got a slightly different trajectory here. But that's not a problem. In fact, this is actually a little bit more efficient than the first one because I'm maintaining my speed as I go out instead of having to coast up to the Al Apple apps and losing speed there. Now I, I did mention in the last episode that uh, rockets are more efficient the faster they're being fired from and uh, the reason for that is that the kinetic energy of a projectile or an object is uh, based off its mass and velocity squared which pretty much means that if you uh, have the same mass but one's going at twice the velocity it has four times the energy than the one that's going at the one times velocity which also means that uh, adding 10 meters per second to uh, 2,000 meters per second is adding a lot more energy than adding 10 meters per second to zero meters per second and of course rockets add the same speed no matter what speed they're initially fired from Anyway, you can see a couple of lunar encounters and escape velocity. Let's uh, set this as target again. Very nice. I'm going out a little bit slower so I can control it a little. Looks like everything's fine. The descending node is a little bit uh, 
far from where I'd like it, but that's not a... Oh, oh, just had an encounter. Yeah, Peter said I had an encounter, at least. Let's go ahead and turn it around and fire a retrograde. See if we can bring that back. Come on. Just a little, little bit of thrust. There we go. Oh, oh gosh. Oh uh, yeah, see the computer. It's not quite perfect. It's mostly an estimation thing anyway. Floating point errors and whatnot. Alright. That looks alright. In fact, it's a little bit better than the other one. Alright, basically not going to be firing that engine anymore, so let's go ahead and open those. Close that so we can see things real good. Yeah, there's the sun. Looks like... Yeah, it looks like the uh, solar panels are in just fine of a location. Nothing wrong with that. And you can see the Kerbin going away. See the moon off in the background there. Speeding up time, of course. See the moon's orbiting Kerbin. Very nice. All right. I think I just left the sphere of influence there. Off into interplanetary space. Let's go off into the map mode here. See the two spacecraft. The one I launched first, right there. The trajectories are pretty far apart, but that's actually a good thing because they won't land at the same time, so I'll have time to work with them. Anyway, let's go ahead and pass this node here. And, uh, now would be a good time to start our uh, correction burns, or mid-course mid corrections. Let's bring that up. Yeah, that's a pretty high encounter there. Looks like I need to burn upwards. Right, yeah, that's, de that's decreasing it. Very nice. Alright, come on, come on, no, 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 ah, come on, ah, forget it, that's close enough. I know there's an encounter there, let's just switch off to this other one. <laughs> Alright, let's see how close this is going to come. ahead of us, but I think that'll actually make it land later. Let's see. Yeah, it's actually pretty close already. Let's just decrease that a little bit. Let's see, can I get any closer? Ah, no, uh, yeah, that's it. That's as close as it's going to get. That's fine, I can correct it later. Let's, oh, wait, hang on, let's uh, see just how long it's going to be. About 48 days. Alright, let's go ahead and switch back to this other one. Alright, uh...
Yeah, that thing's still jittering around, but I think, yeah, it looks like 30 days, so this one is going to land first. Or it's going to intercept the planet first. Let's see. And yeah, my encounter's gone, but I know it's going to intercept the planet. Let's just uh, fast forward time and see what happens. Look at that. Come in close here. The planet's going to come in behind us by the looks of it. That's fine. I'll make the intercept uh, lower velocity. They're getting close. I would expect an encounter by now. See, I'm pretty sure the computers that we'd have uh, controlling the spacecraft in real life would be far more accurate, less likely to have these kind of bugs. Uh, looks like they've got to go farther. Yeah. Let's see. And oh, there we go. Now the computer's made up his mind and we're definitely in the sphere of influence. And actually the, uh, oh, let me switch over to it. And actually the uh, computer program should have been restarted when I switched spheres of influence, so this is pretty well set now. So let's go ahead and uh, alter my path a little while I'm still out here. Just burn a little bit to the east and upwards. You got an encounter with Ike there, but I'm not going to go out to Ike. Just bring this up to the plane of the planet. Okay. A little more east so we don't end up running into the planet. So we want to just come into the atmosphere. We don't want to actually be hitting the planet. All right. Now I've got to figure out where we're going to land. I think. Let's see, check our fuel here. Good. Okay, this is my prime location. It's nice and low. It's far north. Flat. <laughs> and I think uh, this over here, right there, should be my secondary location land. If I can't go there, I should go to the other one. So let's figure out which one we're going to actually go to. It looks like 15 hours. Let's see, 15 hours, 40 minutes. Now I know the rotation of this planet is 18 hours, which is a little bit different than Mars, but let's pause the game real quick and do some math. All right, so it's going to rotate about uh, three quarters or so. So uh, it's going to rotate there, and then when I'm at my closest approach, it's going to be there. So that's no good. It's on the opposite side of the planet from me. Let's uh, look at this other site. <laughs> yeah, that's looking a lot better. Let's see right there. It's, uh, all right, so it's right there. It's going to rotate around. The planet will be about there. Oh, that's perfect. Look at that. All right. Let's adjust our orbit a little bit so we come in over that. We've got to burn a little bit farther north. Is that right? Right about. Yeah, a little bit more. Okay. Now I gotta burn west again. That periaps is way too high. You gotta actually hit the atmosphere. Alright, that looks plenty deep in the atmosphere. Looks about right. Well,
Alright, let's try it. Let's just go for it. <laughs> if we miss our landing spot, well... It's just demonstration, right? <laughs> yeah, let, let's go ahead and uh, check things out once we get in there close. I can adjust the trajectory a little bit. Oh, look. Let's get back to Duna. There we go. Oh, see, there's my landing site. There's the. Yeah, that looks, that looks alright. Let's go ahead and burn down a little bit more. Not too much, just so we hit the atmosphere a little thicker. We don't want to bounce off. Alright, keep going. <laughs> Sorry, Ike, we're not going to you. Alright, ditching that. That should hit the atmosphere also. And burn up, presumably. <laughs> All right, we're into the atmosphere now. Turn off the guidance so that it uh, self-orients. Very nice. Now I'm hitting the atmosphere pretty shallow here, so you don't see any fire. But if it was Mars, you would be needing that heat shield, regardless of how you hit the atmosphere. Yeah, I see that going away. All right. And look, there's our landing spot. A nice little base in there. Let's let the atmosphere slow us down as much as possible. Alright, this looks like a pretty good place. Let's deploy our parachutes when we get down around 400. Maybe a little lower than 400. Get kind of close to the ground. There we go. Oh, well, that slowed me down quick. Let's get rid of the heat shield. Oh, uh, that's actually an accident, but it uh, should be fine. Turns out the atmosphere is a little bit thicker on this planet than it is on Mars. So I guess this is more realistic anyway. Parachute wouldn't have slowed me down quite so much. Watch that heat shield, see when it hits. Get an idea of the altitude. Oh, there it is. Okay, so. Let's go ahead and slow ourselves down. Keep things straight. And just to work around here. Throttle's kind of touchy. I just gently come down. A little more. Our ground's getting close. Slow down. Ah, contact. Okay, we're on the surface. Very nice. Everybody, let's get that uh, communication extended and uh, solar panels. That's the highest priority. Get some power. Get rid of that. Don't need it anymore. All right, now let's get this big antenna extended. There we are. It's on Duna. Hey, <laughs> right. now what? Let's see what experiments I have. I have a thermometer. It's negative thirty. It's, that's pretty reasonable. <laughs> see what this barometer says. Uh, 0.13 atmospheres. That's uh, roughly 10 times what Mars would have naturally. Like our Mars would have. Let's see what the gravity is. 
Eh, gravity's about the same. A little less, actually. All right. There she is. Let's uh, fast forward time, see how things look. Watch the sunset. And with that, I think I've gone over 20 minutes. So I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, switch uh, into the episode. So, see you next time.